we do in this one vlog style. My one man trip to Miami for a two day show with a bunch of movers and up lights as well as audio for a gym. Lots of tips, tricks, and hacks, and I show you how I run lights with three different MIDI controllers, ring out a room with an iPad, and some other cool and helpful hacks to let you run an entire show by yourself, but in the most overkill way I know. Let's start off with the prep. 2.27 a.m. I leave in 36 hours for Miami. Uh, I can show you more about Mad Mapper if you guys want to hear about that stuff. Let's get to some programming. All right, successful all-nighter. 8.07 in the morning. I got all my stuff packed here. Got controllers, got the iPad, got the ArtNet node, some notes, just some other cables and chargers and things like that. Some extra little stuff. Clothes are in here as well as uh, the PC laptop and then everything else is in that bag right there. And by the way, right helpful signs pretty much everywhere. Extra set of keys, got some more stuff in here. Primary lighting laptop is in here, always on my back. Good to go. I had to send the truck off two days ago. A to Z. <laughs> Perfect. All right, I got the van. I'm in Florida, driving about an hour to Miami. Set of time got pushed back, so I'm gonna go see if I can possibly talk my way into the school, check out, find all my outlets, kind of get a real plan, because I've never actually been to this venue before. Can start setting up early, I will, but otherwise I'll have three hours to set up Almost everything, I'll wait for the up lights till the next day. So yeah, I'm excited, I'm nervous, uh, but I'm definitely ready to get started. I got to the venue, uh, it's two o'clock, we're not supposed to load in until six, which means I'm four hours early. I walked the space, found the best place to load in. No one's here, all the doors are open. I'm just gonna do it, start loading in. There's people playing basketball, like some open gym time. I'm just gonna start running extension cords on the wall, be out of the way, hopefully no one will notice me. Uh, and I am very, very happy that I found this, that I'm gonna get in. It's really reducing my stress already. It means I'm gonna have more time for testing and troubleshooting, which everyone knows is super, super valuable. Puck locks, very important when you travel. I want you to see this. Uh, I don't really know how I'm going to unload all of it by myself. I was gonna have a five person crew here to help me, but I'm impatient and I have nothing better to do, so. QLXD mic box, audio adapter kit. Right. Don't do this, it's really stupid. Line array stuff, four moving heads. That's the audio board, slash MIDI controller. K12s, stage monitors, more up lights. Good to go. These are all dancers. They like to feel the bass. Plus, I like bass. Nice and gentle and slow. Ten lighting slash speaker stands, all in one giant case. Two heavy to lift. Wow, all right. But I'm really drenched in sweat right now, so. All right, now I'm gonna take all of this gear here up this elevator. hotel room, I have my 3D visualizer software open, and I have my piece of paper that kind of is going to be my note sheet with all my DMX addresses for every light in the room. It's a floor plan view. I'm just going to take a couple notes on settings for these lights, uh, how many degrees of rotation each light is set to for pan and tilt. The programming, if on the fixture, on the light, it's set to a certain number of degrees of pan and tilt, but in the software it's different, so I need to make sure all my lights are going to have the exact same settings. I'm going to write them down here so that I can just reference this and change them right on the light. Don't have to like walk between lights and software and figure all that out. I'm very happy. Thank you. 
Yeah, absolutely. You got that side, Nicholas? Okay, it's show day. Got a lot to do. I'm gonna get to the venue around 6.40. Uh, guys, hopefully they're to let me in around 7.15. Maybe I get in early, that'd be great. Just so much to do. First things first, ring out the mics while no one's in the room. I did not get everything done that I wanted to yesterday. Uh, ran into a bunch of issues, had to help with a bunch of other things that I didn't know I was responsible for, like setting up the stage and putting tarps down. And yeah, so there was a lot. I had help, which was great. Yeah, ringing out mics, programming all the uplates around the room, uh, finding which one is transmitting to troubleshoot my satellite movers that aren't currently getting DMX signal, some connectivity issues with certain lights not turning on, hooking up the DJ, things like that. Just, I have a whole list on my phone of things I need to get done. So I'm just gonna go through, crank out those as fast as I can. Gonna get it done. So that's why I'm going in early. And uh, yeah, don't know how much of it I can actually capture, but I'll capture as much as I can. Check, check, one, two, one, two, hey, hey. You always want to ring out for way louder than you'll actually need. I have an RTA on here which will help me figure out what frequencies are feeding back. Okay. Hey, one, two, three. Check. Let's get louder. Hey. Pretty good, pretty good. Two, two, two. All right, and then I can also set a gate. Hey, hey. Ow, that kind of hurt my ears. Check, check, one, two, two, two. All right, pretty happy with that. Let's see how the music sounds. The levels are pretty much all the way up. All right, feel pretty good about that. Thank you, technology, for helping me ring out a room. Copy and paste that for all four mics, and I'm good to go. Mics are ring out, done, love that. Time check, 717, looks like that took me about 25, 30 minutes, so that's good. Copy paste it for all mics. All right, so I'm gonna take you guys through kind of this control station as well as everything else here. So everything is built around one person running audio and lighting, okay? We only have three hours to set up, so a bunch of cable mess, so don't mind that. But we have uh, a pretty solid sound system and 10, mover, 10 movers as well as 54 up lights spread around the room. Everything is separately addressed so that we can control everything and run some pretty cool looks. So in my opinion, the coolest part about this setup is actually the audio board. I have a way overkill audio board, a QU32 here. Um, and the only reason I have this audio board is because I'm actually using it as a lighting controller as well. This way I don't have to like be over here and then be over here and kind of manage both. This has a custom MIDI controller layer. So in this first layer here, this is the audio, right? And I can pull up my audio faders however I want. And then it has a second audio layer as well with motorized faders, so that makes life really nice. But then the cool thing here is that it has a custom layer, which I can set to a MIDI controller to control my lighting. So now I can jump over here and I can adjust my dimmers for up lights or my positions or my speeds or my gobos and rotations and things like that. So that is super helpful. That's why I have this controller with all of its uh, motorized faders. So that is one of three controllers I have here though. The other one is this Launchpad Mini, which also gives me some movements. These are all cues that I programmed, all right? And I have different looks here. Um, and then I have different banks of pages, and these also have some faders on them as well, which control different things. So that's that. And then the last one here is the drum pad. The drum pad's super cool because as this is like a dance competition, dance classes, things like that, I can really make the lights go to the music by drumming on the drum pad, right? And as I drum, I'm causing different flashes around the room, different lights are flashing, as well as up here where you would normally have crash symbols, I have scenes. So I can turn certain scenes on and off just by going up here. So now when I'm drumming to the music, right, and I can turn a scene on, turn it off, and I can do that kind of rapidly and create strokes and things like that. So those are my three MIDI controllers that are all controlling Mad Mapper. So Mad Mapper is running over here on this computer, um, and I can just cue different uh, looks and things like that that I've programmed. Uh, if you guys want to hear more about Mad Mapper and why I use it for lighting as well as video mapping, and it kind of helps bring everything together, uh, then let me know in the comments below. All right, and the last thing over here is this visualizer. So this is Realizer 3D. It is lighting 
uh, 3D visualization software. It's discontinued, you actually can't download it or anything. This is a new computer and I had to pull it off an old computer just to get it on here. But I really like using it, um, I'm very familiar with it, and it allows me to see what all my lights are doing without being actually at the front of house. So it reduced a lot of the cables I had to pull around just because I have this here and I don't have to like, actually like see every single light or see what the lights are doing up front, I can just look on here. So that's super helpful. Obviously I have the QLXD microphone, so I have four of those. Then I have a whole mess of cables under here, you know, power strips. I have the ArtNet node that's running all of my DMX signal. So um, that's that. And by the way, this is receiving live data from my lighting controller, Mad Mapper. So that's that. The rest of the place is pretty simple. We obviously have a bunch of cases and extra cables. Um, we pivoted and decided instead of taking up stage space, let's just take some mover cases that were the same height put the backdrop on top of that and it raised everything up, so that was nice. Um, and so we have two tops and a sub on each side, and then I also have three movers. Because I brought everything in a van, I didn't have a lot of space for trussing or structure, so we ended up going with these uh, lighting stands and or speaker stands, and then I just built these little top plates here to hold the movers. Pretty solid, not gonna go anywhere. Uh, very happy with this. And then I just kind of built a design that's like these three layers that I'm actually pretty happy with. So for a three hour setup, um, this is pretty extravagant for one person and a couple guys to like get up and quickly. Um, and then finally the DJ who's going to show up later today, they'll be over here, got their power stripping cables. So that's pretty much the whole setup. Um, very happy with it, obviously lights around the whole room and we powered all of the lights because we're here for multiple days. Uh, but today, so to speed up teardown a little bit, I'll be going around and unplugging the up lights from their power because they're battery powered, so they'll still be on and I can reduce how long it takes to tear down. Uh, last thing here is I did put two speakers on the stage for stage monitors because, well, we're dealing with dancers and dancers like it loud and they want to be able to hear. So just because I put the speakers off to the side, I made sure I had two on stage just for music. And that's kind of our whole setup. Uh, I hope you like it. Uh, and if you'd like to hear more about kind of the events that we're doing uh, and not just all video production, let us know and we'll make more videos about all of our different events. Thank you. specifics wow it is bright okay let's talk a little specifics about lighting so uh, obviously I have 10 movers and 54 up lights that would be a pain in the butt to wire and DMX all of that so I don't uh, I wired six of my 10 movers DMX directly the other movers are all wireless and how do I do wireless well see this mover behind me it's in the corner of the gym I don't want to have to run cable to the corner of the gym I already had to run power right so what I do is I drop an up light near the mover and then I have a wireless fre frequency with a flare con. All of the up lights can receive that wireless frequency and then I can pull the MX signal from that up light and I can daisy chain up to the mover. So that's what I've done here. That's what I've done over in this corner and I've done that in all the other corners of the gym. So that way I don't have to run DMX cable to the other side of the room but I can put movers over here on the other side of the room which is very helpful for stage washes and things like that. So you can see here that I have the mover all the way over here and then the up light that's actually plugged into is up here, right there. So that's the up light. It's getting signal from my tech booth right over there. Uh, and I can show you what that flare con looks like. And that's how we run wireless DMX. And what's cool about the flare cons and things like that is that you can actually run multiple wireless universes, okay? And a universe can hold 512 DMX channels. So that's gonna get you a lot of up lights and a lot of options. You can run multiple by putting different flare cons on different frequencies. So we run all of our lights on frequency 14, channel 14 on the flare con. We standardize on that as a company. That way when you open up a case of up lights or any kind of lights that are wireless, you know it's just gonna connect correctly. We run on 14 because it's rare that other people around us would also randomly run on 14. It's a random number we picked. Now, we want to do multiple wireless universes. We can have another flare con be transmitting on channel 10. 
or something like that, you know, distance them out a little bit. And now we can have two different universes that are wireless in the room. So 512 channels, now we can do, what is that number? 1,024 channels of wireless DMX in the room, which is super helpful for larger shows. Um, anything important you would want to wire. Uh, so if you can wire stuff on the stage, then you're not gonna run into as many issues or possible risks as if you did everything wirelessly. Wireless doesn't respond as quickly as wired. So those are the cons of going wireless, everything. Um, and then reliability and things like that. Uh, I will always try to wire if I can, but if my need is speed, then I will go wireless, because obviously not running cable is faster than running cable. So a lot of times we take up lights and use them as wash lights and we hang them on the truss, and if we only need them for a certain number of hours, let's say six hours, then I'll hang a bunch of up lights on the truss that are wireless and uh, battery powered. It does make the truss heavier, so make sure you take that into account in your loads, but um, it definitely speeds things up in the setup and the teardown. All right, that's that, and uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. actually fit everything. I'm kind of surprised we did it that fast. Actually, I'm extremely surprised we did it that fast. Uh, it took us about an hour and 15 minutes to strike absolutely everything and have everything packed. We were about out in 45 minutes. It took us 15 minutes and another 15 minutes to get everything downstairs and then into the van. So yeah, we're good to go. The van is definitely riding low. Yes, it's very heavy. Very happy, the one downside was that there's a whole bunch of windows with no shades in the room. So the room was very bright from the sun and if uh, I've learned anything in the past, it is don't fight with mother nature, it will always win. Whether it's a hurricane or the sun or things like that, I have plenty of stories uh, to go along with those. But um, yeah, you're not gonna beat the sun. You're not gonna be brighter than it. 
So I did what I could. I, I uh, got creative in certain ways by not doing uplights on the wall, but rather putting them on the ground and pointing them around the dance floor at the people so they could see the light flashing, but it wasn't you know, brightening up the space or anything like that. So it is what it is. Audio sounded great. Everything worked. Uh, no actual, no issues. Not once was there feedback. So I'm very happy about that because all the choreographers were walking around the room with the mics in front of the speakers, um, making speeches and being loud. So yeah, super, super happy. I think the client's happy. Pretty confident the client's very happy actually. And, uh, and yeah, so now let's go hang out with all the other people. I'm gonna say goodbye and uh, train ride. It's the only thing that's left before I get back to Virginia. Hopefully that goes well. like this just let me know in the comments below if you have any questions you want to see videos on mad mapper realizer lighting any topics that you guys want to know about let us know so we can make videos on it and uh yeah luckily i made it onto the train and i'm headed back to virginia